Let's talk about some outdated style rules that you might actually be following and you don't even know it. Of course, we all know at this point in our lives that you can wear white at any time of year. Um, black and brown go together really nicely. So does navy and black. We already know that. Younger generations didn't even know those were even rules <laughs> at this point. But let's talk about this. Wearing jeans over a certain age. There's a lot of people still out there that feel like as you get older, you can no longer wear jeans. And I even remember my mom saying this when I was in like high school or something. I'm like, mom, why don't you wear that with some jeans? She's like, oh, women over a certain age should not wear jeans. I'm not in high school anymore. She's got crow's feet and you know, <laughs> kids and stuff. And I just feel like you should wear jeans if you, if you like the way you look in jeans. If you don't like the way you look in jeans or they're uncomfortable, then don't wear them. My six year old does not like the way she feels in jeans and she's very very young but i'm so i don't make her wear them but i think it should be more about how you feel in them versus being too old to wear them also jeans have come a long way and i feel like you can definitely find a pair out there that fits you the way you want it to oh <laughs> this one you're gonna argue with me you you say you're not but you are you're gonna argue with me but i have scientific proof um horizontal stripes do not make you look wider. There I said it. I'm not making this up. It has been scientifically proven. I will link the scientific study below. So here's what happened in a teeny tiny nutshell. That whole idea of horizontal stripes making you look wider than vertical stripes came from a science experiment they did looking at a flat one-dimensional box box of horizontal stripes, box of vertical stripes, and in looking at those two, the box looks wider. But whenever they eventually tried it out on actual people in fashion, turns out that the vertical stripes actually made people look wider than the horizontal stripes. Personally, I think this is because our bodies have curves naturally, and so if you have a vertical stripe, it's gonna be kind of curved around because we have all that stuff. And so I feel like that kind of makes it makes us look wider. But anyway, my point is don't be afraid of horizontal stripes. Get that out of your head that you look wider <laughs> um, with those. And if you find a horizontal stripe that you like, don't be afraid of it. Go try it on. You look fabulous. Ooh, the next one. Ooh, okay. This one, the rule is to not mix prints. Now I think over the years we have settled that yes, you can mix prints as you probably all remember, we were all wearing florals and stripes. Florals and stripes together was like, you know, groundbreaking, just, you know, very fashion forward. Now I think of, of 2012, whenever I see florals and, florals and stripes together, but we were all like, ooh, wow, we can mix prints. So we've proven to ourselves that this is possible. Now, mixing prints is a little bit tricky and you have to be a little intuitive about it, but if you're not intuitive about it, but you kind of like the idea of mixing prints, there are lots of ways that this can go horribly wrong. <laughs> but one of the easiest ways to do this is just to get two different prints, but they're in the same colors, like houndstooth and polka dot, but in the same colors, or stripes and plaids, but in the same color, or a thin stripe and a thick stripe, but they're in the same colors. I feel like when I see this look, I'm like, that looks really good. <laughs> the next, rule that we follow, we didn't even know it was a rule, but it's something we tell ourselves in our head, is that you're trying to make your body look perfect in your clothes. Like, let's hide everything that be considered a flaw. No one needs to know that we are imperfect somewhere underneath our body. Now, I know we all wanna look our best and we don't wanna wear things that, you know, make us look heavier than we are or um, more broad-shouldered than we are if we don't want that, that kind of thing. But it's okay if like your stomach sticks out a little bit when you're wearing a dress. I don't really know a lot of people that have a flat stomach, do you? The only people I know who have an actual flat stomach are actual fitness instructors. They do this for a living. Um, I don't know a lot of other people that do. So if anyone is like, oh, you have a stomach, oh my goodness, I never knew. I mean, that's their problem. I personally love wearing things that flatter my shape but I have to get it into my head, I mean, I'm talking to myself too, that I don't have to have everything looking like I'm perfect underneath there. The next style rule that I feel like as we get older, we start to feel like this, but we feel like we have to have a signature style. Like we need to know what our style is and stick with that all 100% of the time. Having a signature style is great and it makes your life so much easier when you're getting dressed and I mean, there's a, so many great things about having a signature style. However, what if you're a person who likes to dress classic and timeless? 
five days out of the week. And the other two days, you like to wear sequins and faux fur and um, a red cowboy hat. I don't know. It's okay to want to wear different things at different times. I feel like I have evolved more into a classic style, but I also have a lime green shirt that I love wearing and it is not classic or timeless or any of those things, but I mean, I'm wearing the badooki out of it. The other rule that you guys comment a lot, and so I, I have the video that I said this in is not posted yet, so I don't know how y'all are going to react to it, but it's something I mentioned before. Anyway, it's that you don't have to wear skinny jeans only with your tall boots. Everyone's like, you can't wear anything but skinny jeans with the taller boots because there'll be some bunching up there in the jean area. But you know what? It's kind of a style right now and it's okay. The fashion police is not going to stop you on the street and be like, I see a crinkle in your pants. You should go back home and change immediately. That's just something we have gotten accustomed to and we've just started to believe that the only way to wear these taller boots is with skinny jeans, but it's not true. It's Another style rule that I feel like we probably moved past this, but I'm just gonna mention it, is that menswear is only for men. And I've often said in, if you want to get a relaxed fit button down or blazer, um, t-shirts, that kind of thing, a great place to get it is the menswear section of a thrift store. If you're not finding the right cut in the women's section of something that's a classic style, like go try the men's section. I will tell you, when I was in high school, I could not find a pair of jeans that fit me right. It just, I don't know what the problem was, but everything just fit not right. It didn't fit great and I didn't like it. Come to find out, and it was a girl that worked in the jean store, whatever it was, she suggested I try on the boys, the male version of, I guess it was Levi's or one of those kinds of jeans from, you know, 100 years ago, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> ah, climbed both way to, to hill to school. Anyway, um, I tried them on and I'm like, oh my gosh, these fit so much better. And so I wore boys jeans for years and I, was proud of it and nobody ever asked me, hey Ann, are you wearing girls jeans or boys jeans? Nobody cares, I look good, I feel good, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Matching your shoes to your bag. That's one of those older ones that, you know, back with the black and brown and not wear white after Labor Day that I think we've moved past, but I just kind of felt like it needed to be in here because I do still see people comment that like, oh, but your doesn't your bag have to match your shoes? It doesn't have to. It doesn't need to match anything that you don't want it to match. And there's no rule or fashion police that's like, you can't do that. There's a lot of outfits that look amazing not having them not be matched. Actually, this is a bonus rule, even though I'm not even at the end of this, my rules yet, but your jewelry doesn't have to match either. Like you don't have to have the perfectly matching earrings to a, you know, the, the necklace or anything like that. It can be mixed and match. You can wear silver and gold together. None of that matters. It really is just all how you feel about it looking on yourself. I'm bringing up another one that I said in a couple videos ago, but um, thinking denim on denim is a bad idea. I feel like it looks cute. I feel like people in their head, they're like, that sounds like a horrible idea. And maybe it is, but I feel like it can look really stylish. And I'll put pictures up here that might make you think so as well. <laughs> the next style rule, and I, not in the too distant past, I kind of felt like this for sure, but um, thinking that wearing bubblegum pink or even hot pink is only for 13 year olds. It's not people, it's a very big trend now and that's not why I'm thinking it. But I think what it is is there's been enough adult looking styles that have come out in these colors and been a beautiful version of the color that I'm like, I, you know, I, I'm kind of feeling this bubblegum pink and the hot pinks. It can look really chic. It can look really nice if it is your color. Some people will say that hot pink is everybody's color. I don't know who says that, but I have heard that before from someone. Who did I hear that from? I don't know if that's quite true. I think it's a color that you have to be either drawn to or not. And there's, you know, some things in pink I love and some things in pink that I'm like, that's horrible. But I think pink can really be worn by people of every age. I don't think you have to be 13 and um, having your birthday party in order <laughs> to wear pink. One rule I didn't have on my list, but I'll just mention it because it's one that I go back and forth with, especially after turning 40. It's like something changed in my head, but I don't believe in dressing your age. I really firmly believe that you should wear what you feel good in and you know wear what makes you feel comfortable and all that good stuff. But I just feel like there's certain things that I would wear when I was 35 
that I don't want to wear now. Like, I just feel like I'm looking, I look like I'm trying too hard. I'm like, and, and also in my head, I'm like, why do I need to have my boobs out and a short skirt? Like, I'm better than this. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know what it is, but just, I don't feel like, I feel like you should wear what you want. But for me personally, I just don't feel like I want to wear that anymore. But I do want to look sexy, but I don't want to be provocative. So anyway, has society, have has it affected my brain in ways that I did not want them to? Have I been brainwashed? I, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think about dressing your age. Um, and how you personally do it in your life. Anyway, let me know what you think. Are there any rules here that you felt like, no, I really need to keep that rule or that maybe you didn't realize you were abiding by and you're now gonna break it? Um, <laughs> let me know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time.